Flectarn, perhaps one of the most well-known camouflage patterns to come out of Europe within the last 50 or so years. Its origins can be traced back to the Third Reich, as many of the patterns used by the Waffen SS bear a resemblance in that they too were made in a series of flecks, meaning dots or spots. If you want to learn more about the pattern itself, you can check out our History Of video on it. And yes, we know there are a few mispronunciations of a few German words. Thank you for telling me what I already I... know. Anyway though, in this one we're going to be looking at some more common German Flechtarn pieces, along with a few commercial copies and pieces as well, and what to look out for with them. Finally, we'll dive in a bit about why they're slowly but surely becoming harder to find on the surplus and collector's markets. So to start, let's look at the standard issue field shirts and pants. These were first introduced on a general level at the start of the 1990s after a series of camouflage and uniform trials that spanned through the 1970s and 80s. As of right now, there are two uniform cuts, a standard and tropical one, and two pattern variants, a green dominant woodland and a tan dominant arid or desert version. Regarding the actual uniform cuts, there have been a few changes to them since their first appearance. So let's start with the first iteration of the most common standard issue one. The shirt features a basic zip-up front closure with a cover flap that's secured by black snap buttons. These are seen on pretty much every uniform piece with early ones being a painted brass that was prone to wear, so at some point in the mid 90s they were switched over to a black plastic one. On either side are two chest pockets, the wearer's left featured slots for pens along with a velcro strip above for name tape, these were closed by way of the same buttons along with two small velcro strips in the middle. On the shoulders are tabs for rank slides as well as small German flags, which have been a staple for German and West German field uniforms for quite some time, stitched onto the sleeves. Below the flags on the wearer's right side is a single pocket which included a small slot for pens and pencils along with a single buttonhole which was apparently to hold pocket knives. Additionally, along the front closure are two buttons that were used for attaching the older square-shaped flashlights. The armpit area has six little holes for ventilation, and finally the cuffs can be adjusted by way of a large strip of Velcro. On the inside, these featured a single white tag on the collar which details the manufacturer, the year of production, sizes, and so on. Above this was a small hook loop for easy hanging when not in use. Lastly was a small inside pocket closed via a single Velcro piece. Now this was the first iteration of which there are two more known ones. The others are pretty much the same except for a few minor things which are switched around or removed entirely. Starting with the second version, one of the more subtle changes when viewing from afar was the removal of the Velcro strips on the front pockets. However, the largest change came in that the shoulder pocket was moved over to the wearer's left. Though the exact reason isn't known, a good guess is that it was done as most forces are right-handed, so having a shoulder pocket on the left would be more ergonomic and easier to access. Finally, a secondary tag was added towards the bottom of the jacket at some point, which showcased the washing directions a bit better and in more detail. The third iteration of this was almost exactly the same, except that it removed the two buttons along the front closure that could be used to attach the older style flashlights, and lastly the internal pocket was eliminated. Now this brings us to the second uniform cut, which was introduced for forces operating in hotter regions that weren't necessarily arid or composed of desert terrain. This version really only saw three minor changes which were the six holes in the armpit area being replaced with netting to allow for even more ventilation, the front zipper being removed, meaning the closure was secured by just the buttons, and finally the fabric becoming a bit stiffer due to the insect repellent impregnated into it. Now, this tropical cut was pretty much first introduced with the desert variant of Flectarn, which made its debut around the late 1990s. This version of the jacket was essentially the same as the aforementioned one, with the exception of the pattern obviously, and things like name tape strip and hook loop changing to a tan color. So here's a look at all five versions up close. In the back we have the four green dominant versions, with the desert Flectarn up front. It's worth pointing out the differences in the colors of the standard Flectarn pattern, which has been an area of debate for some time, with many claiming the colors were shifted post-2005, while others believe it to be due to batch and manufacturer differences. Whatever the case is, one definite reason is that of fading and aging, which can be seen very often amongst pieces. To round off these jackets, let's take a look at two pieces, an interesting commercial copy of one, and a piece that's frequently found online often referred to as a survival vest. Starting with the commercial piece, this was likely made in an attempt to pass it off as an issued one when they first started being surplused. However, almost immediately you can tell that the colors of the actual pattern are off a bit, looking more bright green. As you look closer, you'll notice that the buttons and zippers seem of lesser quality. Finally, this is more of a thing you can tell by handling it, but the fabric is far stiffer, plus the tag is made of an almost plastic-like material, not to mention the markers scribbled over, which you almost never see with German items. Now, here's just a quick side-by-side -side between a real on the left and fake on the right. 
It's an interesting piece as commercial versions of these jackets aren't all that common, as companies tend to use the pattern on more custom or expensive pieces such as rain jackets and parkas, one of which we'll be looking at shortly. So, prices for these. Well, they are kinda all over. They used to be pretty cheap, however it seems they are getting to be a bit more scarce for a few reasons which we'll talk about towards the end. A good estimate on the standard jackets are about 25 to 40 US dollars. The tropical variant is a little trickier to find, though often will be priced the same. For the Desert Flecton jacket, these are a little less common than the woodland pattern, but can still be found for around 40 to 60 dollars. Now here's that interesting piece frequently labeled as a vest, survival jacket, or something along those lines. Over the last few years, they have been popping up in a few places, however they are not officially issued, but rather converted from one, that being the standard issue jacket. Essentially the arms were cut off, with the shoulder pocket being moved to the wearer's right side. Additionally, the collar is cut off to an almost Mandarin style. It's definitely a curious piece that seems to have taken on a life of its own within the surplus and collector's market, all while repurposing older uniforms. Prices for these usually fall between $25 and $35. Now we can move down towards the pants. Much like the jackets, they had some testing during the 1980s, but were standardized come the start of the 90s. However, since then, they haven't really changed all that much. Regardless of cut or camouflage variant, they sport nearly all the same features, which are a zippered fly with a single button at the top, six buttons along the waist to attach suspenders, belt loops, two waist pockets, two cargo pockets closed by sets of the same black snap buttons, and a single back pocket closed by way of a button. The only difference is that woodland sets have non-adjustable bottoms, while the desert sets have drawstrings. Unlike the jackets, there weren't that many updates to them, with really the only big difference being the removal of the Velcro from the cargo pocket, which mirrored the chest pockets on the jacket. Prices for both version of standard issue pants will usually fall around $40 to $50. While on the subject of pants, here's one that's not often seen. A pair printed in the commercially made lighter version of Wustentarn. Pieces of it aren't the easiest to find, the most sought after being made by the company Sabre that pretty much introduced the variant, however if you look hard enough you can find them. Since every garment made in the pattern is technically commercial, they will often differ from standard issue pieces, however this one was made in the same cut as the issued pants. This means prices will vary from item to item, but expect to pay upwards of $50 per garment piece, minus maybe a hat or something smaller. Speaking of hats, up next we have headwear. Starting off, we have this lesser known crusher style cap, which was technically one of the first issued hats in the Flectarn pattern. It seems that the original idea was to replace the older M43 caps for designs that were a bit more popular with European armed forces around that time. These didn't really catch on though, and were only issued to members of the Luftwaffe. It's a pretty straightforward design having a more rounded appearance, two small vent holes on either side, a front cockade with the German colors, and the overall ability to be crushed up and put in a pocket. The inside sees a basic tag, much in the same vein as all other garments. Price-wise, these are a bit funny as depending on where you are, you can get them as cheap as $5 to $10 or expensive as $20 to $30. However, for whatever reason, this design didn't go far and the more traditional ski hat became the primary issued one. Though the other hat was being considered, tests were done with the ski hats with initial ones looking much closer to the M43s, buttons and all. However, this updated design was ultimately chosen as it was a bit smaller and likely easier to put in a pocket or stash away when not needed. Since its introduction, it hasn't changed in design with the only update being the creation of the Desert variant. Here are both versions. Like the previous hat, they feature the vented holes on either side, the front cockade, and tag on the inside. Both are relatively easy to source, though the woodland is far more common. Prices for these will range from about $15 to $30. Now, there are very well-made commercial copies of these hats out there, specifically the desert ones. Here is one such example made by Sturm. As you can see, color-wise, they're practically identical, with the main differences being the sizing of the stitch work and a more flat-fronted portion, whereas original issue ones flare out a bit. Next up are boonie or jungle hats. Because Germany was a bit slow with developing their desert attire, they initially had a modge podge of uniforms and camouflages. Tan boonies were issued for a time. This is mentioned because the cut was then used with the Flectarn pattern. It features a chin strap with small leather adjuster piece, vent gaskets on either side, and a single snap button on the wearer's right to secure the brim up. Now, these are most common in the arid version, with the woodland being somewhat harder to find, though pieces are still relatively cheap, coming in at around $15 to $30. To round off hats, we have the general purpose winter one. These feature a small adjustable brim, ear flaps which can be secured up by a long strip of Velcro, faux fur lining, and tag inside. Prices for these are around $10 to $15. To end our close-ups on garments, we have the general issue parkas and one final commercial piece. 
To start, we have the parkas. These are a bit longer in design with the idea to cover past the wearer's waist. They feature a number of elements that were pretty much the same as the jacket, such as zip-up front closure with cover flap, which was secured by way of snap buttons, Velcro secured shoulder tabs, the German flags on the arms, two front chest pockets, with a Velcro name strip above one, much like the earlier jackets, originals of these included a Velcro piece in the middle as well, the sleeve pocket, early versions had them on the wearer's right, while newer ones have them on the left, and the adjustable Velcro cuffs. Initial versions also included the two buttons to attach the older style flashlight as well. In addition, they also have an adjustable hood built into the collar, a pull string at the bottom, two zippered openings below the armpits, likely to allow the wearers to warm their hands, two slanted zippered pockets below the chest ones, a single pocket on the inside, and an adjustable internal waist cord. Much like the jackets, when it came time to adopt the Desert Flectarn, these were simply made in the pattern. This time around, however, no changes were really seen. Finally, an insulated liner for these exists, however, they don't directly connect to them, but are rather worn underneath. They are dark green in color, that include a zip-up front closure, a single-angled pocket, adjustable pull cord bottom, pass-through openings below the armpits, and elastic-style cuffs and collars. Prices for these are a bit interesting as the woodland parkas have actually become a bit more common and easy to find than the jackets as of late, while the desert ones are slightly less common. For both versions, expect to pay about $25 to $60 and $20 to $40 for the liner, which is relatively easy to find as they're popular standalone pieces. Finally, we have our last piece, a prime example of a purely commercial garment printed in Flectarn, this waterproof insulated parka. Like the hat from earlier, it's made by Sturm Miltech, which is essentially the commercial arm of the company Sturm that sources many surplus pieces from governments and other official manufacturers. Essentially what that means is that they make pretty good quality commercial replicas and pieces in general. Though it deviates from German design in many regards, it's still nicely made with a detachable liner connected by zippers, a big hood, large front pockets closed by way of Velcro, and nice internal pockets. And that more or less covers most of the common, or at least more commonly used, Flectarn pieces of the German Bundeswehr. Now let's quickly discuss two elements tied to Flectarn, why pieces are slowly drying up on the surplus market and the fashion side of things. So if you do a search of Flectarn online, you'll notice that there are still quite a few results, many of which are items being sold. However, things like the jacket and pants aren't as common as they once were, and prices have generally come up a bit. Though surplus pieces are still abundant, most of them are before the early 2010s or so. This is because of a few factors. The most common reason is that Germany isn't really surplusing many of their items anymore due to quite a few newer distributed pieces being infrared treated. On top of that, their concern is that forces elsewhere, some of which may harbor ill will to them or their allies, will use the uniforms and or camouflage for various purposes, which is actually already happening as you can see by the photos. That may change soon though, as over the last few years, tests have been done with updating the Flectarn pattern and current issue uniform cuts in a bid to modernize forces, but only time will tell where that goes. So essentially what all this means is only older pieces that have been on the market for years, items purchased as of a few years ago, or newer dead stock items that were stashed away are available and once they run out, pending any new uniform or camouflage update, that'll pretty much be it. Now to wrap things up, let's take a look at the fashion side of things. Flectarn, by and large, has quite a following both in collectors and military circles, as well as fashion and streetwear scenes. Being that the pattern has been used by Germany for over 30 years now, it's been a mainstay pattern in Europe, which has helped to influence many other countries, and because of three decades worth of surplus items, has permeated into the public sphere. Though it's not as flashy as other patterns that have been co-opted by companies for fashion movements, its unique design has a certain appeal that transcends its intended concealment purpose. This has led many vendors and outlets to mark up their pieces as vintage, as it has fallen victim, at least in some instances, as upcycled or hip pieces to both own and wear. But that will pretty much do it for this video, hopefully highlighting these pieces has helped some. A very special thanks to the Sportsman's Guide who supplied the Desert Boonie, Winter Cap, Vest, Parka Liner, as well as the Sturm Miltech Hat and Parka. To our US and Canadian viewers, you can find these as well as many other Flectarn items for sale right now on their website. Link to which, along with ones for every item provided, can be found in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe, or just check back soon for more a close-up on combat clothing right here on Uniform History.